Now, we talk about the sun and the sun being what you give. We talk about the earth being what grounds you. We talk about the moon being part of what drives you. The nodes, which look like horseshoes. So you've got the south node and the north node, which looks like a, so the south node is sort of a smiley face horseshoe shape. The north node is sort of an upside down horseshoe. The south node and the north node are, I like to think of them as the thematic bookends for your life story. They tell you the south node which is the bottom one, is the theme of your life for about the first 40 years of your life. So it's your youthful theme. It's really interesting to look at your South Node theme in conjunction with your Mars, because Mars is often where we also have their, our youthful theme. And you'll oftentimes see a relationship, not a literal relationship. So it won't be the same gate necessarily. It could be, but not necessarily but it'll be a gate that probably has a similar theme. I'll tell you a secret about human design before I tell you about the nodes. There are 64 gates in human design. There are three big circuits and a couple of micro circuits. Uh, we have nine centers. We have 12 profiles, five types. Really, when you start to distill human design down, if you just really study the themes and the charts, you'll actually see that there's not as many themes as you might think. Even though there's 64 gates, a lot of them are similar. They're just, they're slightly different, but they're not that different. And so oftentimes you'll see a cluster of gates in a chart. Usually you'll see a cluster of gates in a chart that are different gates, but thematically they carry similar themes. And so when you look at say your South Node theme, which is, as I said, the theme of your youth until you're about 40, and you look at Mars, which is really, also part of our youthful folly exploration theme, you'll oftentimes see there's a relationship between the theme highlighted by your Mars, your Mars gates and your South Node gates. Even though they might not be the same gates, thematically they may have similar, they may be similar. The North Node, and by the way, you shift out of this South Node youthful theme into your North Node theme. So remember, they're back. They, they're a little bit backwards than what you might think. If you're like going down the chart, you might think that the North Node would be youthful and the South Node would be your older, your older theme. But they actually, the South Node is a smiley face. North Node is a frowny face. Don't think anything too bitter about that. <laughs> but anyway, um, the the North Node represents the more mature version or the more mature expression of the South Node theme. That theme kicks in after what's called your Uranus opposition. So when the planet Uranus is opposite, not uh, opposite on the human design wheel where you, it was positioned when you were born. So when it's crossed from where you were born, so it's halfway through its transit, Uranus has about a 84 year transit plus or minus. Then that South Node theme switches to your North Node theme. This happens around the age of 38 to 42-ish, depending on your, un your unique chart. And that North Node theme represents your maturity. You're, you'll oftentimes see a relationship between what you need to learn to move from the South Node theme to the mature expression of the North Node theme. You often see that theme duplicated, not only in your Mars, but often in your Saturn and in your Chiron placement in your chart. So what, what really happens and why this is kind of interesting is you will go through an astrological, if you're familiar with astrology, you'll know this. You'll go through over the arc of your life, several major life cycles, astrological life cycles. They start happening at the end of your 20s. And they kind of happen every decade until the end of your six, your 50s. And then you get a little bit of a break. And then you go through a Uranus return at 84. So you have your first major life cycle at the end of your 20s. That's your first Saturn return. That's about 28 to 32-ish. By the way, these cycles last about four years. They kind of go in a crescendo. You've got like two years of intensifying energy and information. And then poof, two years where you kind of go through healing and integrating. So at the end of your 20s, you go through cycle, 
between 38 and 42, you go through the Uranus opposition. That's the second life cycle. The third life cycle happens at the end of your 40s, early 50s. That's your Chiron return. And then at the end of your 50s, moving into 60, you also have a second Saturn return. So kind of every decade, at the end of every decade, as we move into a new um, a new decade, <laughs> um, we move into our 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, we get an astrological life cycle. Now, these cycles can be pretty disruptive sometimes, especially because, especially if I would say you're out of alignment with your authentic self. We tend to experience disruption when we're out of integrity with ourselves. And we talked about that a lot, just even in this program, that when you're true to who you are, when you know how to tap into your inner authority, you know how you feel and respond, you understand your authority, what it feels like, how you connect, when you have the courage and you're deconditioned enough to stop reacting and really be true to yourself, then oftentimes those end of decade cycles that happen are not that cataclysmic. But if you're really off course, then oftentimes those cycles can feel really intensely painful or disruptive, not because you're screwed up or you're broken or you're stuck, but really because the universe in its infinite wisdom, question mark sometimes, right? <laughs> the universe in its infinite wisdom is often shaking things up for you because it's really wanting you to see, hey, you're really off course here. This, this, let's shake this up. This isn't working. This relationship you're in, no. This job you have, no. This, this pattern that you've got going on with your family, no, right? And we have these opportunities, even though it feels kind of cataclysmic in the moment, to actually sort of burn things down to the ground and start over every 10 years as part of our maturing process. Okay, I digress. Okay, south node, north node, first planet, Mercury, that's what you're gonna communicate about. Venus represents what you really value. It's also oftentimes, especially if you are attracted to women, but not limited to that, that's oftentimes something that you cherish or value in the people you're attracted to. Mars, same thing, but Mars is also where we oftentimes have youthful energies or youthful themes that we have to learn in order to become more mature in our relationships. Jupiter, which is next on the line, is the source of our blessings. Saturn is what we need to learn in order for us to move into the maximization of our potential and the fulfillment of our blessings. Neptune represents part of our spiritual life path, but oftentimes also tells us the themes we need to work on in order to really activate our spiritual gifts. Pluto is a generational planet. Uranus is a planet of, Uranus is a place where we always have growth. On a personal level, it's oftentimes places where we ourselves are unusual, but it's also a place where we can expect the unexpected. So the themes that highlight that your Pluto, that your Uranus is highlighting are oftentimes places where you've had twists and turns in the plot line. It's a place where we do, again, a lot of big growth and it's not really a personal planet. It's more of a collective planet. So it tells us about, um, it tells us a lot about um, what's going on in the world around you. Chiron's not really technically a planet, but I think we talked about Chiron in the program, but Chiron is a planetoid. Um, or a little planet. Chiron is what we call oftentimes the wounded healer. It represents your spiritual purpose.